Continuing in our 8D series, we're now going to look at D3 containment. So D3, the containment, is a critical step in preventing uh, further defects from reaching the customer. Uh, it can be challenging, however, because the source of the problem might not be fully known, but we can't stop all production, and so we've got to maybe mitigate the risk using a problem the definition that we developed earlier. Some key prerequisites and activities in the containment phase, we have to ensure that the problem has been defined, the team is selected, a risk assessment has been conducted, that the containment recommendation is developed, a communication plan developed and deployed, and then uh, the physical containment itself. So containment, though, re recognize that it's just temporary until the permanent root cause and corrective action has been taken. Now, in D3 containment, there's seven musts. So here they are. Uh, the first one is we must ensure the problem is defined. We must have a team selected. We must perform a risk assessment. We must recommend containment. We must develop a communication plan. We must get buy-in on the, on the uh, containment action, and then we must contain. So by the time we get to containment, of course, uh, one and two on this list should be complete. So now let's begin with uh, number three. And that's the risk assessment. So uh, in the risk assessment, there's three components of, of risk. There's the severity of the problem. When the problem occurs, how severe is it? The frequency of occurrence, how frequently would we expect it to, uh, to occur? And then to what extent is it detectable? Is the failure detectable? And we multiply those three together to get a risk priority number. Uh, each of the severity, occurrence, and detectability, uh, those you can use a scale of 1 to 10. So, uh, for example, the severity, uh, when the severity is low, we use a 1. When the severity is quite high, we use a 10. And similarly for occurrence, when the, the frequency of occurrence or the probability of occurrence is low, we use a 1. When it's high, we use a 10. On the detectability, though, notice it sort of reverses itself. So when we have high detectability, it's actually uh, a 1. And we have low or no detectability, that's a 10. And so based on the risk uh, priority number, the RPN, that'll help us to determine our next steps. So now let's go over to Excel and see how this plays out. In the D3 tab in Excel, uh, at the top here, we've got a little bit of a checklist. and so. Uh, by this time, we should have had our problem defined and the team selected. And of course, you can just uh, uh, select these, these just toggle. So it's a quick visual just to keep track of where you are, what's been done and what's not been done. So we move down. The first thing we do is go to risk assessment. We can just click there. It's going to take us to the risk assessment. And so we start by describing the failure. And then uh, here, any, by the way, anytime you see uh, uh, yellow colored cells, that means that there's an input required. So we want to describe the failure. Uh, and then score the, the uh, severity, the occurrence, and the detectability. This will automatically calculate. This is our RPN here. And then uh, here we've got a little bit of a table that uh, tells us uh, the severity, for example. Uh, if it's a nuisance or a distraction, then we score to 1. If it's a loss of primary function of 5, and if there's loss of life or significant uh, money involved here, we score that at 10. So we would just drop that in here, 10. And then, as I mentioned, the risk priority number will automatically uh, score itself. And then based on the, the risk, by the way, 1,000 is the highest that it can get. And so when you're up near 1,000, I would suggest somewhere over 700, 700 or higher. Uh, that's pretty uh, severe in terms of risk. Uh, then we want to um, propose a containment uh, action. And it could be several steps. Uh, once we do, though, once we undertake that, or at least preliminarily assess what that is, then we then we can preliminarily a score, rescore the RPN number to see what kind of an impact it's going to have on our risk. Okay, based on the risk priority number, we're going to recommend containment. So in order to do that, uh, we must know where to look, of course, for uh, the, the defective parts or the failed parts. We have to know how to find them, we have to know how to stop it, uh, and then of course we have to stop shipment. And you know, we should consider here or be coordinated with uh, quality, production, and the customer. So we'll go back over to Excel now. And just below the uh, risk assessment area, right in here, we've got a containment uh, recommendation, so we're just going to describe that. And again, it could be a, a number of steps, and so we want to detail those out here. 
The next step in our containment, our D3 containment, is the communication plan. So what does a communication plan consist of? Well, who do you need to communicate with? Could be internal customers, could be suppliers, certainly external customers. What message are you trying to communicate? Uh, what do you need from them? What can they expect from you and who will deliver the message? So these seem uh, somewhat obvious, but in the heat of the moment when there's a very important uh, failure and uh, coordination and communication is very, very important. Um, communication, I would suggest that communication is rarely given the time it deserves, but it's the number one ingredient to successful customer relations and team effectiveness. Uh, in 2008, a survey of a thousand plus organizations, uh, they were asked for the number one response to the question, what is the most important skill of a team leader? And the answer was communication. So I can't uh, overemphasize how important it is that we describe what we're communicating and who is doing the communi communicating and to whom and by whom. Now in Excel, just below the containment recommendation, you'll see the communication plan here. So. On the left-hand side, uh, who's the audience? Who's the person we're trying to reach or the group we're trying to reach? What's the objective? So what are we seeking? Are we seeking awareness or support? Do we need some decision from people? Uh, how do we intend to do it? Is it going to be phone, face-to-face -face meetings, uh, email, uh, telephone call, that sort of thing? And then um, how will we know that the message was received? What sort of response are we looking uh, for? from the person we're communicating to uh, that we uh, know that they understand uh, what we're communicating. And then uh, the key message is uh, what are we doing and why? Uh, what does it mean to the person we're communicating to? What does the person need to, need to do differently, if anything? What support can the person expect from us? And then who's that assigned to and the due date? And it, I would say this doesn't take long to construct but it is extremely important that it be done so that everybody knows what everybody else is doing. Now once we have our communication plan, the next step is getting buy-in on the containment action. So we need to consider what actions are being recommended and how will the containment be executed, where and when the containment will take place, uh, who needs to agree to the action, and consider production quality, the customer, management, suppliers, and so forth. And the containment itself, what actions will be taken, and stick to a noun verb type format. We saw this over in problem definition. So what is the deliverable? When will containment be complete? And then uh, lastly, who is responsible? Who is accountable? Who should be consulted? And simply, who needs to be informed? Now if I just scroll down just below the communication plan, uh, you'll see here there's the containment agreement. So we need to describe the who, what, where, when, why, and how. And this is, uh, this is the, uh, the containment uh, agreement itself. And then just below it, we see the containment action plan. And so here's my noun verb. So here's the action that I'm going to take. Here's the deliverable. What will that action result in? What is the date? When will it take place? Okay, who's responsible? Who's actually going to do it? Uh, who is ultimately responsible for making sure it gets done? Uh, is there anybody that needs to be consulted? And anybody that needs to be informed? And then, and then the notes, uh, any notes that are relevant to the action itself. So this is the containment action plan. And then if I uh, just scroll all the way up to the top again, I can see off of my list. So I've got a, a, in, I'm back, I'm still in containment. My problem's been defined, my team's been selected. My risk assessment is now done. Uh, when it's done, we can just indicate as such. The containment recommendation uh, is uh, now complete. The communication plan, let's say, is complete. Uh, we have agreement on what the containment looks like and then the action plan itself. And so again, this, is, this checklist just keeps all of the steps in the containment uh, in order and visible to all. So that concludes this video. Uh, we'll look at additional uh, 8D steps in subsequent videos. In the meantime though, at SixSigma.org, there's a lot of other information out there. 
and um, I would encourage you to look at uh, purchasing the Eight Disciplines Problem Solving Methodology. It's an e-book uh, chock full of advice and very specific and detailed uh, information on completing an 8D for a very reasonable price. And thanks for watching the video, and we'll see you next time.